Hello and thanks for joining us for THV 11 News at noon. Happy 501 Day. I'm Journey Taylor and these are Monday's headlines. Right now, an urgent search is underway for a man who is suspected of killing five people near Houston, Texas. Well, we know at this hour in less than two minutes. Medical professionals say the number of skin cancer diagnoses is on the rise. I'm Skyler Henry in Maryland with a look at the stats, the misconceptions and how people can keep themselves safe. And calling all Hunger Game fans, the new prequel film, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, is on the way. We're sharing a first look at 1222. And speaking of first look, let's take a look at this new week. Meteorologist Corrales Ortiz, thank you for joining us. What are you watching over there? Well, fortunately, we aren't tracking anything in the forecast for the next few days. We are going to be seeing a nice stretch of weather compared to the rounds of rain that we saw last week and even this weekend. But now that we're in a new month, we are going to be seeing a nice start to that rain free for the time being. But I did want to highlight how much rain we've picked up already for the year. It's been one of the wettest starts for us on record. Matter of fact, we picked up 34 inches on the dot. It's nearly double where we normally should be for this time of year. This record spans back to 1876 and the most recent uh, wettest year was 1882. So it's been quite some time and we beat that by a, a couple of inches there. So that's between January and April. No rain in the forecast anytime soon. A beautiful sun filled day. Just a few clouds lingering in the area. We're sitting at 66 right now. A breeze out of the north and west making it feel refreshing out there. We'll continue to warm up a couple more degrees into the low 70s this afternoon under that abundant sunshine. I have a full check of your forecast for the upcoming week coming up in minutes. Thank you, Corrales. Well, right now at noon, Hunter Biden is in Independence County in an Independence County courtroom today. The trial is determined to determine child support for a woman he allegedly had a relationship with. The original complaint is from 2019 and court documents say that a DNA test in 2020 confirmed Hunter Biden is the father of the child. Last September, the case was reopened. Motions were filed to change the amount of monthly support, change the child's last name to Biden, and to have Hunter Biden appear to court in person. You can stay with THV 11 and THV 11.com for the very latest. Now to the massive manhunt that has grown to include more than 200 members of law enforcement searching for the gunmen behind Friday night's deadly mass shooting in Cleveland, Texas. Authorities say the suspect is armed and considered very dangerous and could be anywhere at this point. Janet Shanley Ann reports. The community of Cleveland remembered the five people gunned down with an AR-15 style rifle. Hundreds of deputies and detectives combed the region north of Houston for the man police say went on a deadly rampage inside this home. We do not know where he is. We don't have any tips right now. The attack happened Friday night, the sheriff says, after a neighbor asked the suspect to stop shooting his gun in his yard so an infant inside could fall asleep. He says it's his property. He'll do whatever he pleases on his property. Deputies say the suspect had been drinking before he entered the neighbor's home and started firing. According to the Honduran Foreign Ministry, those killed are Diana Velasquez, Abdulia Molina, Jonathan Cazares, Sonia Guzman, and nine-year-old Daniel Enrique Lasso. All five are from Honduras. Five people died in my county, and that is where my heart is. Wilson Garcia's wife and son were killed in the attack. I don't have words to describe what happened, Garcia says. His wife was on the front porch when she was hit by the gunfire. Two other women were found dead on top of surviving children, apparently shielding them from gunfire. Abdulia Molina's mom said her daughter died protecting the lives of her children. Authorities believe the suspect called a friend for help and are hoping that large reward will encourage someone to call in a tip. Janet Shamley in CBS News, Cold Spring, Texas. Well, the suspect's phone and clothing were found in a wooded area near the scene, but authorities believe he's long gone from the area. And now a THV 11 update. An Arkansas woman is in jail today after being accused of selling human body parts on Facebook Messenger. Candace Scott was arrested for selling several different remains for $4,000 to this man here on your screen. That is 40 year old Jeremy Pauly. Police have been investigating him since they got a report of suspicious activity at his Pennsylvania home that was back in June of last year. 
The body parts belong to the University of Arkansas and were shipped to Pennsylvania. Scott is charged with mail fraud and wire fraud along with other charges. She pleaded not guilty to all of these charges. We will continue to update you as we get more information. Meanwhile, three people have been arrested after a stray bullet hit a baseball player during a game in Texarkana this weekend. The 18 year old Texas A&M Texarkana player is in stable condition after surgery. According to police, the shot came from a fight in a neighborhood close to George Dobson Field. There is no connection between the player and where the shots came from about 400 yards away. Police are still searching for the other two suspects. That is going to be Kamari Butler and DeMarco Banks, believing they are responsible for the shooting. North Little Rock police are continuing their investigation of a homicide this morning. After a shooting over the weekend, officers responded to Poplar Street after receiving calls of multiple gunshots in the area. They found one man was at least with at least one gunshot wound. He was taken to the hospital before he died. Police have not yet told us who that was as the investigation continues. Meanwhile, state officials are investigating a suspicious death that happened at Cummins Prison. The 51 year old victim's name has not yet been released, but the deputies are still working to contact family. The victim's cellmate is under police suspicion, already serving a life sentence for murder and robbery. Right now, there's both an internal affairs and criminal investigation. And authorities are investigating the shooting for four bald eagles in North Arkansas. There's a federal crime in Arkansas Game and Fish and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are on the case in Marion County. They think the eagles were shot in January or February and there's a $5,000 reward for information on who's responsible. The maximum penalty for attacking bald eagles is $250,000 in two years in prison. And national headlines overnight regulators seized California based First Republic Bank and sold it to JP Morgan Chase. First Republic is the second largest largest bank failure in US history, and this is the third bank failure of the year. Another bank raises concerns about the economy as a whole, but economists say everything will be OK for those impacted. All the consumers who have accounts at First Republic can actually relax because you're just going to walk into your branch if you need some help. JP Morgan is going to make those transactions. Everything's kind of cool. We've got to prevent this from happening again. And the best way to do it is to guarantee these deposits. The bank recent failures in rising interest rates have forced other banks to make it harder for people and businesses to get loans. The combination has some concern that America is headed toward a recession. JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon told reporters this morning that he believes America's banking crisis is now over, but acknowledged that rising interest rates could add more stress. Happening today, the Little Rock Regional Chamber announces a national recruitment campaign to attract out of state talent as part of the Love Little Rock project. Today's announcement features prominent figures like Mayor Frank Scott Jr. and local business representatives. The initiative builds on the Chamber's 2017 Amazon campaign and aims to position the region as an ideal place for future residents by focusing on sectors like technology, healthcare, manufacturing, and finance. We'll have more on this initiative tonight at 5 and 6. The 42nd annual Toad Suck Days is almost here. It's this coming weekend in downtown Conway with headline entertainment, exciting festival programming and plans for a $100,000 in charitable contributions. It's sure to be a fantastic event as it always is. This year, the festival will feature a night of stand up comedy with Nashville based comedian Dusty Slay, following by Grammy nominated country singer songwriter Haley Withers on Saturday. The festival will also feature its usual carnival games and rides from Friday to Sunday. And today marks the start of the application window for Arkansas's limited elk hunting permits. Arkansas residents can apply from now until May 15th for a chance to pursue the state's largest big game animal with 18 permits available through an online draw. Winners will be announced at the Buffalo River Elk Festival on June 23rd through the 24th. Applicants need to have a valid resident 
Sportsman hunting license and be at least six years old have by the hunt start on October 2nd. If you're interested, you can apply on the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission website. Well, in just six minutes, we'll share how just an ounce of prevention can save your life. More Melanoma Monday just ahead, but first, let's take a look at weather. Corrales, what are you seeing? Beautiful blue skies, and we'll be seeing more of that in the forecast over the next few days. Coming up, I'll be talking about what changes are in a forecast, which includes a warm-up, and when our next chance of rain is in the picture as well.